I would like to invite you to join me with the teaching of the Word of God in the social media. The YouTube channel is Varun Lahaprasit. In the Facebook, New Hope International Church. Instagram, New Hick. At TikTok, New Hope International Church. We are so delighted to meet you in this teaching and we believe that you shall be blessed and you shall receive the benefit from heaven when you hear the word of God. We will see you in the teaching. God bless you. Today I will continue to preach in a series called I Will Live and Not Die. We may not face really physical death, lethal problem like cancers or heart attack or something. But death can happen in different areas of life. Death in finances, death in relationship, death in spiritual walk, and also eternal death that we cannot make it to heaven. So how are we going to fight death and we will live? This is, um, I don't know, maybe it's number 17 on the series now. We talk about many principles of how to fight death. I will live and not die. Today, we're going to learn another principle that I believe you will practice as your lifestyle. And this is not just for pastor, but for every believer. We're going to learn about taking authority over the devil. Everyone say, I have authority. God wants you to learn how to take authority over anything that the devil tried to give to us or attack us. When we detect something wrong and we know that it does not come from heaven, but it comes from the enemy, we need to exercise our authority over those things. Exercise authority over the devil and over the thing that try to kill us and come against us. And in this way, you will learn how to pray and believe for healings, for miracles, for breakthroughs, for victory. And we can see from the four gospel that Jesus Christ talked about this and he practiced this. Jesus never prayed to the Father to cast out demons. He just said, go right now. He exercised authority to cast demons out from demon-possessed people. He is the God who exercised authority. And thank God, after we are saved and we become a born-again Christian, we receive authority from God. I remember I was only one-year-old Christian. I was in the east part of Thailand. I did not know the Bible that much. But one day I find out that my oldest daughter was sick with something. I don't want to tell the detail. And I lay hand on her and command in the name of Jesus. I didn't even know the Bible that much. I just lay hand and say, this problem have to go. I left to the hospital and clinic, came back home. That was gone. God healed my daughter. Even though I was a one-year-old Christian, I was not a pastor yet, but God is faithful to His promise. We need to understand that we have got the power and authority as believers. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority, you mean believers, you and me. The authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The enemy here is Satan and also include demons and evil spirit. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Everyone say, I have power. I have authority. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So we're going to learn how to stop cancer, how to get the healing how to command the sickness to go away from our life, the cold, the symptom, whatever that come against us. And we can command anything that come from the devil to go away by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you come to this point of pre preaching, you may say, oh, you mean that the pastor will pray for me? The pastor will command it for me? No. I'm talking about you command. 
not me command for you. You learn how to command anything that the devil tried to give to you. And you allow Jesus to come and heal you and stop whatever that the devil tried to destroy you. Any disease, any sickness, any problem in your life, it can go away. And I have a lot of experience about this, about commanding the enemy to go away, commanding the evil spirit to go away. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, everyone say, he who believes. Everyone say, I am a believer. And his baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow. Follow who? Follow those who believe. I encourage you to be Bible believers. You believe in what Jesus said in the Bible. Those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. When Jesus told the disciple to do the great commission, to go out and preach the gospel to the nations, he mentioned about different signs and wonders that will follow all the believers. Are you the believers? You think those signs are for you too? Or only for preachers? No, for you. You have the right to exercise what God said. Those signs will follow you. He said that in my name, they shall cast out demons. As believers, we can cast out demons from ourselves, and we can cast out demons from people who come to Jesus and need your help because they don't have enough faith yet. Some believers say, that, oh, pastor, you're so extreme. You talk about demons. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in casting out demons. That is for Jesus' time, not for today. Some preachers say this way, the Bible can be divided in different parts. One part is for non-believers, one part is for the Jews, and one part is for believers. I don't believe in that comment. I believe the Bible, the whole Bible is for us. And we should not cut any scripture out of the Bible. Jesus said, in my name, you shall cast out demons. So it means we can cast demons out of us. Amen. Actually, it just happened to me in this trip. I had a revival service on Friday night. And one kid, about seven years old, just ran around and very naughty and very annoying. And when he came to me, I lay hand on him and I cast demon out of him. In Jesus' name, demon have to leave right now. Right after that, he became calm down and smile and obedient. Before that, he was so annoying the whole time. So when I lay hand on him, I said, demon, you have to leave this boy right now. He did not have any reaction, but demon leave, left. And he became a new boy that night. He smiled and played and very friendly after that. We can cast out demons. And a lot of times people think that, you know, I'm a believer. I don't have demons anymore. That is wrong. Because Christians still can commit adultery. Watch pornography. Died of cancer. Have problem and problem and doubt and all kinds of problem. And actually Jesus said you cast out demons only from believers, not from non-believers. You are non-believers, don't cast I will not cast demon out of you because you're going to get worse seven times if you don't have Jesus in you. Casting out demons is only for believers. And definitely you can cast demon out of yourself as well because you have the authority. If you don't believe in casting out demons or exercising authority over the devil and his workers called evil spirit or demons, you're not walking in the faith of Abraham and you denied Jesus given authority. So we walk by faith like Abraham. We don't see it, but we walk by faith. The book of Romans chapter 4 talk about the faith of Abraham. 
we have the same faith. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Do you have the faith like Abraham? Do you believe in Jesus? Who is the father of us all? Abraham is the father of our faith. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Thank God. You may be Vietnamese, but you can have the faith of Abraham. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gave life to the dead and called those things which do not exist as though they did. When you exercise faith, you speak out something that did not exist as though they did. You say, I'm healed, even though you're not healed yet. Demon, leave. You speak out by faith. You command it. You speak by faith. Faith come along with speaking. You need to speak. That's what God did. God called things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope in hope, believe. So that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, we should be strong in faith, we should not be weak in faith. He did not consider his own body. He did not walk by sight or by feeling. Already dead, he was old, 100 years old. Since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, God had promised, he was able to perform. Now in our generation, at that generation, God told Abraham, even though you are old, you're going to have a baby son. He stands in faith. Today, Jesus told us, you have the authority and power. You can trample on the scorpion and snakes. And you can exercise this authority and heal the sick. You lay hand on the sick. You can cast out demons. Is that a promise of God? Yes. In the book of Luke chapter 9 and 19? Yes. Is it a promise of God? Yes. Do you believe in his promise? Yes. Are you going to walk by faith? Yes. You believe that you have authority? Yes. To command evil things out of your life. To command sickness out of your life. I never forgot one day I was driving to Evergreen Hospital and I started to get sick with fever and coughing and start to have a cold that morning. So in the car, <laughs> I was driving to Evergreen and I cast demon out of me. Go away right now. Amen. And the demon come out and I was totally healed in the car. No more symptoms. Gone. Amen. The fever is gone. The coughing all gone because I exercise authority. I have faith in what Jesus say. You have authority and power, and you can trample on the scorpion and snakes. Everyone say one more time. I have power. I have, power. I have, authority. I have authority. Some of you look so excited. <laughs> really? When you are sold out for the promise of God and see the that God never lies and what he say is true. You get like, yeah, it's mine. Yeah. So if, I, if uh, somebody here write a check, $1 million, and want to give you, I promise you're going to give $1 million. How are you going to react? <laughs> if you react that way, it means you don't believe. But if you say, yeah, do you believe? Yes. You need to get excited about this promise of God. Everyone say, I have, I have authority and power. And power. <laughs> you need to believe it and exercise. You need to walk by faith. Believe like Abraham believed in the promise of God. The problem is this. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times, we are in the latter times now, some will turn away from the faith. It can be different degree. 
turn away from Jesus or turn away from certain doctrines and the word of Jesus. I give you example. One time, I look at the Instagram of a pastor in Seattle area, make a church, and that pastor come out and say, "No repentance, no repentance, no repentance, no repentance," seven times. And when I look at that, oh, this is from demons, false teachings. No repentance. You can sin. You don't need to repent. You don't need to ask God for forgiveness. That is what First Timothy four one say. Later times, some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. You have to be careful what kind of preaching you listen to. Is it biblical? Is it from the Holy Spirit? Is it here in the Bible, or the preacher twisted the Bible and come out with his own ideas? And that is from demons. You have to be careful because this is a spiritual thing. If you watch in the YouTube wrong teaching, not only do you receive wrong idea and wrong doctrine, demon in that past are going to jump on you, and you're going to get into trouble one day. So you have to be very careful. I'm very, very careful about this. I don't listen to people easily because I have to look at their life and their doctrine. The Bible says. In the last days, some people will depart from their faith, and they don't believe in repentance and casting out demons anymore. And the seducing spirit will destroy them. Therefore, you need to be very careful about what you listen to. If somebody knock on your door at home and come in and say, "Hey, I'm really tortured by demon." Will you help that person and cast demon out of him? Will you? Will you do that? Yes. Only one person raise hand. Yes. Do you believe you have authority to cast demon out from people? Yes. Yes. yes, you have the authority. That should be the way of your life. You cast demon out of yourself. You cast demon out of, of people. That should be your lifestyle. Why? Because Satan sent demons to come to people. As a pastor, if I don't cast demon out from my members, I am stealing your blessing. You walk into the building one way, you walk out the same way, because we never cast demon out, and we need to practice deliverance in the church. We need to exercise authority and cast demon out of us. The demon can do many things to destroy your life. It can be cancer, can be heart disease, blood disease, can be anything, can be all kind of sicknesses, or can be sin. Demon can cause you to sin, to love money, to watch pornography, to commit adultery, to go and flirt with other people, and betray your own spouse. It can be so many things, and if you don't cast them out, those sins and sickness and curses gonna destroy you eventually. You may not miss heaven, but your life on earth gonna be in miserable because you let demons control you. So you need to know how to command them to leave you and get out of you. If you know you have a problem, maybe I heard that some Christians. A lot of percentage of Christian in America are addicted to pornography. A lot. Some people are addicted to gambling, to cigarette, to alcohol. So we need to cast those evil spirit out as soon as possible, because they come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We need to be careful. And one of the Bad evil spirit is we call religious spirits. Religious spirits will tell you there are no demons. Oh, don't cast demon in the church. Religious spirit will do anything to make you become religious, but you don't follow the Bible. You don't follow what Jesus say. We need to be careful. We need to get rid of those religious spirits, evil spirit, demons, and bad friends. Don't associate with bad friends who bring in. Evil spirit, amen. Take authority. Get out of here, religious spirit. 
evil spirit. So let us follow the Bible, the four gospel, Matthew, Luke, John, all this scripture very well. We need to follow the four gospel and look at Jesus the way he is. I believe that if Jesus walked into the U.S. today, into many churches, he will be kicked out of the church because he began to cast out demons, heal the sick. He will perform signs and wonders. His service may last about five hours. People should stay there. We should not try to dilute Jesus into our denominational way or religious way. We don't try to change Jesus into our way. Actually, Jesus is the head of the church. He is the master of all. He is the shepherd, the great shepherd of our soul. He is the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. Therefore, we should surrender to his way. And he showed his way in the Bible, in the four gospel. We should follow his way, not denominational way, not ritualistic way, not traditional way, traditional way of American churches, of Thai churches, Chinese churches, Indonesian churches, or Vietnamese churches. We need to follow what Jesus said and follow his character, follow the way he did the ministry. Jesus said, the work that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than this, you shall do. We can do the same thing as Jesus did. Jesus cast out demons, we can cast out demons. Amen? Amen. Jesus performed miracles, we can perform miracles. We can see supernatural things happen in our life. He knows everything, and we should listen to him. Just follow the way of Jesus wholeheartedly. Don't try to dilute anything he performed. And how can we know what Jesus did 2,000 years ago? We read the word. The word of God is the light. The word of God gives life. And when we follow the word, it will work every time. Why it works every time? Because when Jesus was walking on earth, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit without measure, without limit. One time, the Bible said this way, Jesus cast out demons by the finger of God. You know what is the finger of God? The Holy Spirit. So when you follow the pattern of Jesus, you use authority. You use power of God. You exercise authority and command the wrong thing that comes from the devil to go away. What happened? You follow the way of Jesus. And you follow the way of the word. And who's going to make it happen for you? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will perform God's word for you. If you follow God's word, it will happen. Even simple person like Pastor Da, she lay hand on the sick, people get healed all the time. Pastor Da lay hand, they get healed. Simple, because we follow the word and the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit makes the word happen. For our life and all the days of our life, it shall happen. Therefore, please believe in what God says here. I give you authority and power. Don't try to use your own idea of how to serve God. Don't use your friend idea how to serve God and how to win the battle. Use the biblical idea. Yes and amen to what the Bible says. Seek Him with all your heart and follow his ways. Walk in his footsteps. Amen? Amen? Why God give us authority? Because we have the enemies of our soul. And the enemies come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. One enemy is our own sinful nature. The second enemy is Satan and evil spirit. Satan was cast out from heaven. He was so mad at God. He was so rebellious and prideful and very stubborn. And the Bible says that we were created in the image of God. So he hated us. Satan hated us because we were created in the image of God. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. 
the devil come to kill, kill your marriage, kill your finances, steal your happiness and your joy. He want to destroy you. Definitely, the final purpose of the devil is that you will not make it to heaven. Sometimes people are offended. I plan to preach about offense soon, because I notice many people walk away from God because of offenses. They are offended by somebody in the church, or they are of, they feel offended by God, and that. It's not a wise thing to do that you grab the offense. So the devil will use offenses. He will try to make you feel doubt with God. He wants you to leave God, and you will not make it to heaven. Not only that, he wants to destroy your health, your finances, your family. He wants you to break up from your spouse. He wants you to be addicted to cigarette. Cigarette can cause 30 diseases. He wants you to be addicted to alcohol. Alcohol will make your brain shrink, and you lose memory when you get older. Alcohol can make your liver in trouble. Cirrhosis. So don't be addicted to alcohol and smoking and all this gambling, all these things. But the devil knows he. They have the tricks how to get you to death, to destruction. And to lose your life, he knows how to do it. That's why we live in the battlefield, and we need to use authority and power to resist the devil and command demons to leave. Demons give people cancer, and we have to command that cancer to leave. Amen. We should not welcome any sickness and disease. Another enemy that we have not only Satan. And demons is our own body. Do you know that we are sinful people by nature? We call the flesh. The flesh is a sinful nature inside us. The Bible says clearly that when we walk in the flesh, we will reap destruction and death. But when we walk in the spirit, we will reap peace and joy. Which one do you want to choose? Peace and joy. A life? Yes. Do you want to choose death and corruption? No. So, which one do you choose, the spirit or the sinful nature? Spirit. Okay. This is why the Bible says, "Don't walk by sight, but walk by faith." What does it mean? Don't walk by sight. There's so many meanings. Number one, even though you have symptoms, and you still have faith that the symptom will go, and you don't go by the symptom. I have this experience because I have severe eczema for many years since I was born. Actually, when I start to turn into toddler and teenager, I began to suffer from eczema. And later on, I learned this principle: I command every day. This skin problem, you have to go. But it kept getting worse. So by sight, I will give up, but I don't walk by sight. Even though I still take medication in order to control the eczema, but I kept saying, "In the name of Jesus, this curse of eczema have to leave my body right now." Every morning I say that. Every morning, and one day suddenly I woke up in the morning, all gone, and my skin now so good, no more problem anymore, because I don't walk by sight, but I walk by faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus. Faith in the Word of God. Faith in what God tell me to do. In the Bible, we walk by faith. Whatever the Bible say, we're gonna obey everything here. When we walk by faith, we obey everything God say in the Bible. But what does it mean also walking by sight? It means you walk by your flesh, by what you feel, by what you see, by what your Desire one in your flesh here. There are two, three things in your flesh: the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These three things come from your flesh here. Oh, I have to pass the test a lot in the cruise this time because you have a sit-down dining, 
and have so many food in the menu, and some of people ordered three main food, two order f appetizer, and three dessert. And I was sitting there, who oh, steak, lobster? Maybe I should order all, but I have to say, no, my flesh. I don't want to gain weight. I don't want to mahalo. Come five kilo. I need to control my flesh. You have to fight with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that's how the devil tried to destroy us. You may be a smoker, and you say, "I'm going to stop. I command this smoking habit to go away." You put the cigarette down. Five hours later, your jaw start to get tight. Ah, oh. and then you hear the voice. Oh, that's okay. One more cigarette. That's okay. Are you gonna walk by sight and by feeling and by what your flesh say, or are you gonna walk by faith in what God say? Which one? You walk by faith in the Word of God. If you walk by sight and you see the paycheck come in, ten thousand dollars. Ah, if I walk by faith, I have to give. One thousand dollars to God's kingdom, but I rather walk by sight because what that one thousand dollars, I can buy many things. I'm not going to give to God. I like to keep one thousand dollars with me. That is walk by sight, walk by your feeling, and the devil knows how to tempt you. When that happened to you, when you heard that kind of voice, when you feel that way. When you have that idea coming up, you have to say, "In the name of Jesus, I resist you. In the name of Jesus, I command my flesh to stop controlling me right now. I repent and I say no to this feeling, to what I see, to the lust of my flesh, to the lust of my eyes, and to the pride of my life. I resist. In the name of Jesus, you have to go. Because if you don't resist it," Whatever sin you make, eventually you open the door for more demons to come in. Do you know that demons work as an army? That's why one part of the Bible, when Jesus cast demon out, the Bible used the word the legion of demon, which means thousand of demon. When you open to the demon of pornography, or greed, or cheating God, you open also the door. For the demon of sickness and cancer and all these things to come in, or accident, and demon will not only stop at you. The demon are the family spirit. They're gonna go down to your children as well, and they're gonna follow your third and fourth generation. So, as a daddy, you need to stop that. Repent of your sin. Don't open the door for demon to come into your life and go into your wife and your kids and follow you three or four generations. This is serious, amen. amen. I I tell Pastor Da all the time, Da. In my life, I have only one life to live. I want to pass on the blessing to my kids and to you. And I check my heart all the time, whether I have the right heart or not. What kind of attitude and motive I have here? I want to walk right with God. And I'm going to resist all the temptation. I'm going to say no. Get out of here. This temptation. I'm going to say no. This problem with the flesh, go away. Demon, you cannot touch me. You cannot make me sick. You need to get out of here right now, because if I open a door for the demon to come in, they will go into my kids too. They will follow. That's why we call generational curse. When you go to see doctor, the A sheet of paper nowadays in the internet. They will ask you: You have any family sickness? Did your dad have cancer? Did your dad have heart attack, liver disease? Even the medical doctors know about generational curses. When the dad has cancer, the kids always have cancer. When the dad has a lot of car accident, the kids have car accident. You need to get them out of your house. Command them to leave 
and never follow down into the third and fourth generation. Amen. Amen. I tell you right now, it's not worth it to enjoy the sin just for a period of time. But you, one day, the demon gonna destroy you and destroy your children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Not worth it. Kick them out of your life by repenting, by exercising your authority in the name of Jesus Christ, and by walking by faith, obeying what the Bible say, obeying what Jesus say. Amen. Amen. Exercising your authority. Take authority over the devil and over your flesh, and stop it now in your life. Do you love yourself? Yes. Do you love your kids? Yes. Do you love people around you? Yes. What you need to do? You choose life. And anytime you get attacked by the enemy, you command, "Get out of here right now! You have to leave my my life." Don't entertain negative thoughts. Don't blame anybody. Don't blame the pastor. Don't blame the church. Don't blame God. You take your own authority and command them to leave. The negative thoughts, the sinful thoughts, the flesh, you command them to leave and walk uprightly before the Lord. Exercise your authority. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us exercise authority right now. How many of you have some sickness in your life? How many of you have some financial problem? Any family problem? Okay. Should we command them to leave? How many people feel that you are affected by the curse that come from your family line? Some curses. Okay. Should we command them to leave? Okay. Let us exercise authority right now. Okay. Let's stand up and exercise authority together. Father in heaven, I come to you by faith. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He died on the cross to give me the blessing and new life. I believe in what Jesus said and what Jesus did. You say in the Bible, Lord, the work that Jesus did, I shall do also, and greater works than this, I shall do. You have given me authority and power to trample on the scorpions and the snake, and the enemy cannot destroy me. You give me authority and power to cast out demons and to heal the sick and to command the curses out of my life. Therefore, I will exercise the authority over the devil right now, over evil spirits. And my own sinful nature, over the curses of the law, in the name of Jesus, I command sickness, curses, problems, poverty, failure to come out of my life. I walk by faith. I believe, I believe and declare, and declare the, curses and the curses and problems have to leave my life. Have to leave my life. Go, right now. Go right now. My life will be changed, will be, changed. Will, be will be blessed by the Lord. By the Lord. I, will I will never be the same. 
And when people come to me, I can cast out demons for them. When I lay hand on the sick, I shall see the healing in their life. Put your hand upon yourself. I am healed. I am blessed. I'm strong. In the name of Jesus, by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, I am a believer. Jesus is my Lord, and I repent of my sin. In your name, Jesus, I pray. For the parents, pray with me. Father, I exercise authority. For my offsprings, for the next generation, the single can pray with me too because you have the children one day. In the name of Jesus, I believe my children and grandchildren shall be saved. The Holy Spirit will work in their heart, open their spiritual eyes to see the light of the gospel. I believe and declare the blessing of Abraham will go down to the thousand generations, and I command the curse and the work of Satan to stop and cannot touch my children anymore. They have to leave. I command you. Take your hand away, away. from my, my offsprings. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your promise in the Bible. Father, we declare that Jesus is our model, and what you say in the Bible, we believe. And we shall practice by faith. From now on, my brother and sister in this church, and those who watch in the live stream and in the YouTube later on, shall experience the authority of heaven themselves, and they will see victory after victory, breakthroughs after breakthroughs. They shall live a long life. Sickness and disease cannot be upon them, and they shall enjoy the salvation that you give to them, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you listened to the whole teaching, and I believe that the Holy Spirit has taught you so many good principle, and you will put this principle into practice in your daily life. In John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus said, "If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him." and we will come to Him and make our home with Him. It's so wonderful to have the Lord Jesus and the Father in your life and over your life to protect you because you obey His teaching. And I believe that the Lord will shower His blessing and pour out His grace and favor upon you because you love Him and He shows love to you. God bless you and I will see you in the next teaching. I want to encourage you to reach your destiny and live an enduring legacy. I want you to declare the blessing upon your life. You will be full of wisdom. You are prosperous. You are healthy. You become an overcomer. You become spiritually mature. You become more like Jesus Christ. You have higher levels of anointing. You walk in great grace. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name.